What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And it's the beginning of January. What we're all feeling right now is that guilt over everything that we ate and drank over the holidays. And that sound you hear is gym owners laughing all the way to the bank because they know you're about to go out and sign up for a gym membership that you're probably not going to use. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble, and I'm nobody special. And folks, look, it happens to all of us this time of year. We all just ate way too much. We drank way too much. We had a good time getting together with family over the holidays. And now we're sitting here saying, oh, I finally have to get in shape. And what better time than New Year's, right? We all have that New Year's resolution. We're going to join the gym. This is the year we make that change. Yada, yada, yada. Throw money at the problem. The next thing you know, March, April rolls around, and we still have not done anything to get into shape, but what we have done is burn through a few hundred dollars on gym memberships that we never used or fancy new exercise equipment that now is just a expensive clothes rack. It happens all the time. And if you think you're alone in this, you're not. All right, this is a widespread phenomenon. As a matter of fact, Americans spend $397 million a year on gym memberships that never get used. That's almost a half a billion dollars in cash is just lit on fire, goes up in smoke. And this is actually one of the most important aspects of the business model of most gyms is that this time of year, they capitalize on that guilt that you're feeling that we're all feeling right now. And they get you to spend that money knowing you're never going to show up, that you're not going to place any wear and tear or any demand on the gym, but they can collect your money. And statistically, it's probably going to be at least a couple of months before you get around to canceling that membership, maybe even a whole year. And at an average monthly cost of $50 a month to join a gym in the United States, you're talking a couple of hundred bucks goes up in smoke until you get around to doing anything about it. And no, you're not alone. 67% of gym memberships go totally unused in the United States. That's almost 7 out of 10 people who sign up for a gym never go. And even if you do go, you go once a month, maybe twice a month, not nearly enough to actually make any difference. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't try to get in shape. And what better time to get in shape than now? The holidays are over. All that gorging and extra eating and drinking and the parties, they're behind us. Now is a good time to make that lifestyle change and to get in shape. And look, your health is a direct input to your finances. Nothing will burn through money faster than bad health, trust me. But throwing money at the problem is not the solution. So I wanted to come up with a couple of ways that we could start to make that lifestyle change without throwing huge amounts of money at the problem. And what better way to do that than to talk to one of the experts? So I called up Chris Taylor over at Financial Fitness to ask him that very question. All right. I am here with Chris Taylor from Financial Fitness. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. Outstanding. So, Chris, what I want to talk to you about is uh, we're talking about that cliche of the January guilt <laughs> trip. All right. I just I ate and I drank so much over the holidays. I stepped on that scale and I got to that number that I just, ah. Oh, that was that number. I was really hoping I didn't cross it this year, and I did, and uh, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to get back in shape. i got to lose weight. And what most people are going to do is they're just going to start throwing money at the problem, and then they're not going to follow through, and they're not going to do anything about it. And I wanted to give a couple of suggestions that people could use to at least test their commitment. While, while they're feeling that January guilt, before they go sign up for that gym membership or buy that expensive piece of equipment that's just going to turn into a clothes rack, wanted to see if maybe there's some things that we could suggest to people that they can start to lose some of those pounds and really kind of gauge their commitment. If this is just a fad and it's going to wear off next month, at least they haven't spent $10,000. So I was thinking about some exercises to suggest and I thought, Hey, why not talk to one of the experts? Because, you know, looking at me and looking at you, we can tell one of us stays in shape. So <laughs> take it away. What, what would you recommend to that person who say he doesn't have a lot of money to throw at the problem, but he's just got to start doing something. The, the most important thing is to do something. You cannot do nothing. Uh, and if, if you're not, you know, we're all in different spots. You know, some people are further along. Some people are way behind. Some people have injuries. Some people, you know, but the important thing is you start. And if you have movements that you can't do, do it with body weight as best you can. Hold on to something, you know, hold on to something and do your squats, you know, start from the ground. And if you're doing it from home and you're not, falling for the sign up now, hurry up first month free gym membership. And they done you for, for, you know, the next 12 months and you don't go or whatever it may be work out at your house. Cause you can be the strongest person in the gym. If you're working out at your house, 
<laughs> but really, I guess the very first thing I would mention is to start in the kitchen because you cannot outrun your fork and you cannot outlift your fork. It all starts there. I've worked with a lot of people that they'll start lifting weights. When you start lifting weights, you get hungry. When you start doing exercises in general, your body gets hungry. You're, you're firing that motor up starting to burn those calories and it does not want to use its fat that's your fuel it's your storage tank and it does not want to use that it wants you to eat more so if, if you can kind of rein that in what i recommend to most everybody is log your food you know I, i'm a welder by trade and i have to measure everything and that really kind of helped me in this caloric intake is by measuring my food in grams that way you know you know exactly what your body runs on you know exactly what you're putting in. And at the end of the day, there's no guessing. When you sit down in your chair and you're still a little bit hungry, you can look at your calculator and say, well, I've got 500 calories left. And a lot of times there's a lot of calories left and you're hungry. You know, And if you don't know, you don't know. If, you, if you've got calories left over and you don't eat them, the worst thing you can do is not eat them because your, your metabolism will correct. So it's a, it's a two-way deal. You know, If you don't eat enough, you're messing up. And if you eat too much, you're messing up. So I guess number one thing for anybody that's wanting to lose fat right now is log what you're eating. Be honest with yourself. Put it in whatever calculator you like. I use LifeSum app on my phone and it'll help you kind of figure out where you're at and cut 200 to 500 calories. That's it. You'll start losing weight today. Right now. It'll work right now. Yeah, I, I think that's probably one of the harder things for a lot of people to maybe to hear or maybe just to admit to themselves, because we all know, right, that weight loss starts in the kitchen. That's the single most important thing is what are you putting in your body? Um, and it's probably the last thing people want to do, right? I, I just want to get on the treadmill for five minutes and then go eat whatever I want to eat. You know, But really, that is the single most important step. I mean, besides what equipment you're using, what exercises you're doing, what membership you get or not, it starts with your diet. I mean, that, that is by far the most important thing. And there's so much information. There's so much distractions. There's so many different people telling you to do so many different things, keto and fasting and all this stuff that it, it, it's a, at the end of the day, if you're eating too much fuel, your body stores it as fat, period. There's, there's no way around that. So you, it's really simple. You just have to figure out what you're on and then cut this much. And you want to lose one to two pounds a week. Any more than that, your metabolism is going to catch up too fast. So if you're eating this many calories and you cut them to here, you're going to lose weight for two weeks and then you're going to stall out. And then you're not going to have anywhere to go. That's why you want to do just little increments, just little, little increments, lose a few pounds a week, a couple pounds a week, you know, pound and a half, two pounds is good. When it starts to slow down, you cut 200 more, but you can't do that unless you log your food. That is the single most important information I ever learned. And it really, really helped. Uh, now, there's a few issues you're going to have with that. And it's that hunger thing, that little thing inside you that says, hey, I want a cookie. <laughs> you know, when I get done eating, I want something sweet. I don't know what the deal is with that, but that's the truth. And, uh, and you can go back and look at my cooking videos on tricks and hacks that I've used and learned. And I use them today. I eat the same thing for breakfast every day, uh, you know. Most of the time, if I'm trying to get really in shape, I do anyway. So, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of, I think that's the number one thing is food, man. That's uh, lifting is a small part of it. So on that token, we say we've made some of the changes. We've made the adjustment, the, the few hundred calories a day. Now we're getting into exercise. What are some simple we'll say low intensity, you know, as far as equipment needs, maybe you can do this with just some basic hand weights or, you know, short of going out and buying any expensive equipment. We're just trying to get started here. We're trying to go from the couch to doing something. What would you recommend to someone like that? I would probably say starting off right now would be body weight, full, a full body workout with your body weight, air squats, push ups. uh, Shoulder presses are hard to do with body weight, so you might use some small dumbbells. Um, and if you, if, if you were willing to get away from body weight just a little bit, I would say the number one best exercise to lose body fat, in my opinion, is deadlifts. 
It sends a signal to your central nervous system to burn fat, build muscle, bone density, and tendon strength, because if you don't, I'm going to break. It, it really, it, and you can feel it. You feel weird afterwards. When you, when you load your bone structure up with heavy weight, it really, your bones get hard and white. And this is important as you get older, because the reason uh, sarcopenia kicks in after about 35, and that's when your, your bones get brittle and you literally start to die. You start to get weaker and frailer. And the only way to combat that is with uh, strength training to lift weights. It, it, it stimulates all that to get better. Uh, that would be, if you, if, if you can find a bar and some plates, you know, that's not very expensive. You can probably find them at a garage sale. You know, I did. Uh, I found a gym going out of business and I bought a bunch of them and I gave them to my friends and sold a few of them. Uh, Facebook it, marketplace, really, you know, yeah. I mean, go, go, no, go in your local and you'll find that stuff because everybody's got it and they never use it and it goes up for sale. They just want it gone. Yeah. And I would say three, I would, I would mention it doesn't have to be three days a week. A lot of people get hung up on that. A lot of people get hung, hung up on, you know, I have to do this and I have to do that. You can miss two days and work out one day. You can work out two days and miss five days. You know, just don't quit. And if you listen to your body, when you start these movements, when you start getting in, even when you do air squats for the first time, you're going to get sore. And if you're really sore the next time, just stretch a little bit. There's, this is a journey. It is a lifestyle. It is going to take you a while to kind of, it's, you're going to learn so much doing this and just, just know nothing's fast. I've got some really bad news for people that are planning on losing 20 pounds in 20 days or whatever they do now. That's not the way to do it. You want to get there really slow and gradual because anything that does like this usually does like this. You know, this is a, a journey. Just enjoy it and learn all you can because you're going to take two steps forward and one step back. And sometimes you're going to take two steps back. The most important thing is do not quit. So we've got our diet under control and we're logging our calories. We're figuring out where we're at. We're doing simple lifts, three, hopefully four days a week. Three's okay. Every other day, you know, whatever's good for you. If you want to hit it hard, do five, whatever you want to do. And you're doing a, 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 some type of full body at first because you don't want to go to the gym and just do chest or whatever. You know, if you're working on the house, it's too much on one small muscle because you're just getting started. So do 20 push ups, maybe three sets, four sets of push ups, do three or four sets of squats, do three or four sets of shoulder presses, you know, kind of hit hit some arms and just do, do your little 20, 30 or minute workout three days a week. And you're going to see massive results that most of the time, my, my new clients that are just coming on board are, they make massive gains just going to the gym. They don't even have to go through the movements real good just because you're stimulating muscles that haven't been touched in so long. So you get a lot of results with very little effort. So don't dig the hole too deep. There's a lot to talk about when you, when you come to talking to people that are just getting started because everybody wants to go all in. They want to run and the treadmill and uh, uh, fast and zoom, but they want to do it. The classes and lifting and they want to do it all at one time. And all you have to do is just, I'm telling you just a little bit, 20 or 30 minutes, get started, let your body recover. Because the worst thing you can do is dig a hole too deep that you can't feel. You just want to dig a little bit and then recover, dig a little hole and recover. Because if you, if you kill it on your first day, you're just going to get stupid sore and you're not going to go back in there. Yep. That's <laughs> you, you just nailed me right there. Every time I tried to get into shape, I'd overdo it for two days and then I'd end up on my butt for two weeks because I hurt myself. So that's well, me too, man. I'm the poster child for it. I learned that from Lee Haney. Uh, he would say, stimulate, don't annihilate. And I started doing that. When I started back into it, I would, I would spend 15 minutes working out and I would get sore from it. It was crazy. And I, I would recover and then I could do 20 minutes and then I would recover and I could do 25. Before I would work out for an hour as hard as I could till I couldn't move and I'd be sore for two weeks. <laughs> All right. So let's say we've made the adjustment in the kitchen. We've done some of these simple exercises and now we're in better shape. We want to go a little further. And now it's time to make an investment in that piece of equipment. Now that we've demonstrated this isn't just January guilt, we're actually committed here. We've made a lifestyle change. And by the way, you mentioned it before that 
There is more than a dotted line between your health and your finances, folks. Your health is this probably the single biggest input to your finances besides your income. Uh, your health is so important. You want to watch a fortune disappear, have some kind of a major mm. life-changing injury or, or illness. Trust me, your health directly affects your finances. And th- one of the things I like about your channel is you, you do the health and the fitness, you do the finance, but you also do a lot on you know, blue collar versus your traditional college experience and a lot on entrepreneurship. You're, you're like this hybrid Jack LaLanne, Mike Rowe, Gary V, all put into a blender <laughs> and then turned on. It's, I really like Thank your you. channel for that reason. And you've done some videos about the Gym Rat, which is a, a business that you just started where you actually manufacture this equipment yourself using your welding background and your fitness background. So talk to us a little bit about that because now we've made these minor changes and now we say we are talking about buying some good exercise equipment. Okay. Well, my story, it goes back to, I got plum out of shape. I was just doing the standard American diet, convenience foods, eating out of the hot box, burgers for lunch, you know, just easy. Whatever was easy is what I was doing. And I got plum out of shape. Every, my hips hurt, my back hurt, my shoulders, I was falling apart. And I was at the chiropractor of all places. And he said, you're going to have to start lifting weights. It's like, okay, well, I got a pretty good background on that. I'll do that. Started lifting weights. All my aches and pains went away. Now it took up 14 months to make the transformation, but that's when I really went down the rabbit hole, figured out the compound movements and all the importance of bone density and tendon strength. And that's what I'm after at this point is longevity. So about the time of the woohoo bat flu, I was in the best shape of my life. And I went, I was going to the gym and I'd always had this squat rack in my head. It, it, it was a squat rack that would do it all. It has dip bars and pull-up bar that has all the grips that I like. It has a place to put your bar when you're doing deadlifts and a place to, you know, all the different, the perfect push-ups. I'll, I'll have to show it to you. I don't have one set up. But I, I said, you know what? I'm going to build that squat rack that I've been dreaming about. And uh, so I did. I built it. And my dad said, hey, I want one. My dad's worked out since he was 14 and never, he's never missed more than a week or two. And he loved it. My sister bought one, wanted one. So I sold her one. And then my brother in law brother wanted one. He's making a transformation and it's just kind of catching on. And that's, that's the next step. That's the, after you get comfortable, cause you're going to lose fat. Anybody that's watching that does what I'm telling them, what I'm telling you, make these small adjustments. You're going to, you're going to, it's, it's going to be amazing. You're like, Whoa, this works. I lost two pounds this week, or I lost a pound and a half. And then the next week's going to be the same thing. And then before long, you've lost 10 pounds and you're eating a ton of calories and you feel good. And people are like, how are you losing that weight? You're eating so much. <laughs> They're not going to understand. Well, to make that next leap to really big build that bone density, you're going to need some heavy weights. And that's what it's for. It's for, it's like, the compound lifting equipment. Th- I mean, that's what it is. There's no frills. It is what you need for bone density, tendon strength, and muscle mass. And it's held together with 14 bolts. It's really simple. It fits in the back of your truck. It's not some big uh, apparatus like they uh, rogue sells a big Mojambi. You know, it looks like a jungle gym with just a bunch of stuff. You don't even know what it does on the side of it. <laughs> uh, there's, there's none of that. It's just what you need. I can throw it in the back of my truck by myself. Now it weighs 400 pounds. You have, there's an art to it, <laughs> but it's built really well. It's made in America. It's, you know, it's, it's, that's just what it is, man. It's, it, it is the end all be all of mobile squat racks. Yeah. I was checking out the, the website before we started this. And uh, a couple of things really struck me. Number one, the thing is built like a brick house. You can, you can tell your welding background. Um, because it is a really well put together piece of equipment. Um, and I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a gym rat to, to use the phrase, you know, I, I do work out and I, I try to stay in shape, but I can tell that there is a lot you can do with this piece of equipment. And yet it's not loaded up with pulleys and all these knobs and switches that people that, I mean, it, it, it really is a back to basics, very compact, well put together piece of equipment. And it, it was very impressive. So uh, I nice. wish you all the luck with that. I'm going to put a link to your website uh, down in the description to this. Also a link to your channel into this, folks. Um, this is Chris Taylor again from Financial Fitness. And the gym rat is the piece of equipment that he makes. It, it really is a fantastic piece of equipment. And again, it's 
I'm not saying go out and, and buy this big expensive piece of equipment right now. If you're feeling that January guilt and you want to start to make a change in your life, start small, start in the kitchen, make those minor adjustments, get yourself moving. And if you like what you see, now it's time to make that leap to that big piece of equipment. To, Absolutely. To that, That's... Yeah, that big piece of equipment. Um, don't just jump in because it'll end up being a close rack. But uh, demonstrate your me... own commitment first. Let me, let me give everybody a tip before we get off here. Um, tonight, if, if you're going to log your food tonight and you realize you're overeating, let's say you're eating 4,000 calories, you know, and you know that's too much. Uh, and you say, okay, well, I'm going to cut it to 3,500. That's it. For the first two weeks, that is it. So now you're eating 3,500. Well, the problem is when you sit down in your chair tonight, you're going to get hungry. Find a food that is not calorie dense vegetables are free you can eat as many vegetables as you want get a pan get a big pan i got a pan that big i load it up with broccoli and just bell peppers and just all the vegetables that i've ever liked i just pile them up on there and i eat until i'm stuffed and it's free you can eat that stuff and not gain any weight there's so many so much fiber in it it burns off whatever calories is in it that's a really good hack to help you at nighttime because that's when people usually lose it. And that's one trick that I implemented that helped me so much because I, I wasn't able to just sit there and be hungry. I hate going to bed hungry. <laughs> so I hope that little, that, that's going to help somebody, I'm pretty sure. And um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. If any of your listeners and you, I hope, would like to come to a meet and greet with a lot of you know, uh, Joe Brown with Heresy Financial, uh, the Economic Ninja, Jim with Wall Street Silver, Rob Keynes with Gold and Silver Pros, me, and Dave Kranzler of Investment Research Dynamics are having a meetup in Denver. And it's pretty soon. It's January the 8th at 5 p.m. They're not charging anything. It's just a meetup to hang out. So if you or any of your listeners want to come, uh, I'll – they're not going to announce where it's going to be until like 24 hours of the beginning, but it will be in Denver. If anybody's interested, it's going to be fun to hang out and see folks. And that is a fantastic bunch of guys. You just mentioned a lot of my favorite channels in that list. Um, so we are looking forward to hearing more about that. And that is the, in Denver on January 8th and uh, location TBD. So look that's it. To more about that. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, folks. I uh, wanted to say thank you to Chris Taylor from Financial Fitness and of Jim Rat Fitness for stopping by. And uh, Chris, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, brother. Y'all have a great day. So there you have it, folks. Chris gave us some really good advice. Maybe not the stuff that we want to hear. Maybe not the stuff that we want to admit to ourselves, but some very good points. Number one, the biggest change happens in the kitchen. And I just love that talking point that you can't outrun or you can't outlift your fork. If you really want to get in shape, it starts in the kitchen. That's where that easiest change can be made. The second point is for the love of God, just get up and get moving. It doesn't matter what you do, just do something. Get on that stationary bike, go for the walk, go for that jog. If you haven't done any exercise at all for a number of months, just that initial get up and go is going to show you results. Now, once you've done that, once you've made that change in the kitchen, and once you've started exercising at least a little bit, once you've demonstrated that commitment to yourself, maybe then it's time to think about that gym membership, or maybe then it's time to think about that expensive upgrade to that fancy gym equipment. And again, if you are thinking about that nice gym equipment, that big fancy set, hey, take a look at the gym rat that Chris has put out there. That is a solid piece of equipment. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. I also want to send a big thank you to Chris Taylor over at Financial Fitness. Again, I will put a link down in the description below. I highly recommend that channel. Click on that link and subscribe. And don't forget while you're here, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. Until next time, live small and dream big.